Okay then my friends, so first of all, the reason I'm making this crash course all about darts is because I'll also be releasing a new updated Flutter course pretty soon as well. Now, Flutter is a framework for creating applications across multiple different platforms like mobiles, desktop, and the web using just a single code base. And when we make Flutter applications, we do so using the Dart programming language, which is optimized for creating UIs across all of those different platforms. So this course is kind of intended as a bit of a primer for people who want to make Flutter applications and want to get up to speed with Dart, first of all, but also for people who are just interested in learning in Dart in itself. All right then, so what is Dart? Well, Dart is a programming language which we can use to make multi-platform applications, right? So for mobile, for desktop and the web. And after we write those applications using Dart, the Dart code needs to be compiled into native machine code or to JavaScript if you're developing for the web so that the applications can be run on those different platforms like on an Android device or on an iOS device. Now, Dart is also what's known as a statically typed language, meaning every variable must have its own type, for example, a string, an integer, a boolean, or some other type. And once a variable has been given a type, it cannot change that type at a later point in the code. For example, if we make a variable called first name and set it equal to a string like Mario, then that variable's type is a string and it can only ever be a string in the future and never another type. So we couldn't then update the variable to a value which is a number like 25 or some other number because that's a different type, right? That's an integer. But we could change it to another string like Luigi, that would be completely fine. It's just a type that cannot change. If you've ever used TypeScript before or another statically typed language like C Sharp, then you're going to feel completely at home with Dart. If you've not, then don't worry. We're going to go over types in much more detail throughout the course. So then, what are we going to cover in this series? Well, we're going to start with the basics and we're going to look at how we can create and work with different primitive data types like strings, integers, doubles, and booleans, etc. Then we're going to move on to using functions, lists, sets, maps, and also control flow. So things like for loops and if statements. After that, we'll learn how we can use classes and generics to create custom objects. And then finally, we're going to talk about futures in Dart and how to make HTTP requests. So there's quite a lot to get stuck into and hopefully by the end of the whole series you'll be in a good position to kick on and start developing Flutter applications using Dart as well. Now just very quickly before you begin I want to mention that this course is going to assume you already have a basic grasp of programming in general in at least one other language so like JavaScript or Python or TypeScript or Java or something else. So ideally you already understand basic programming concepts like what a variable is, what a function is, how we use different data types like strings, numbers and booleans, all that kind of jazz. You don't need to be particularly proficient in programming, but you should know at least the very basics of another language. So if you've not already learned another language, first of all, then I would recommend either my TypeScript masterclass or my modern JavaScript course, first of all. So I'm going to leave a link to both of those courses down below the video. I've also got playlists on Python if you want to learn Python instead. Again, I'll try and leave the link to that down below the video. Otherwise, my friends, you're in a good position to carry on and start learning Dart. So then, to start writing Dart locally on your computer, you first need to install the Dart SDK or install the Flutter SDK, which comes packaged with Dart as well. And like I said before, I will be releasing an updated Flutter course fairly soon. So I will show you how to install everything locally on your computer then. But for this course, just so we can get up and running writing code straight away, we'll be using DartPad, which is an online playground area for running Dart code. And you can find that at dartpad.dev. So we have a code editor right here on the left. Then we have a console and a little documentation area as well here on the right. The console is where we'll see anything that we print to the console from our code. And the documentation section is for code hints, error feedback, and that kind of thing. It's really useful when you're learning Dart, so pay close attention to that little area. Now, there is also a drop-down list of different code examples that we can choose from. And when we select one of those, it's going to populate the code editor with the code for that example. These are mainly Flutter examples, to be honest, but there's a few Dart ones at the bottom as well. If you do want to work locally on your computer instead, you can click on this Install SDK link at the top. It's going to take you to a page where you can download it. But like I said, we're going to stick with DartPad for this series because it's just so much easier to get stuck in right away. 
By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up, and I really hope you enjoy this series, and please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.